Hello everybody, Ian Robson here. Welcome back to Baldacchino. All right, we got what's going on today. As you can see, I got a Grimmy. This is not the Tectron, is it the Tectron? Yeah, it is Tectron. Uh, we're gonna harvest our potatoes that we planted not too long ago. And they are ready to be harvested. Actually, I had to put some, uh, how to put some water down because the moisture was super, super low. So how to make sure they had enough water so our yield was somewhat decent. Anyways, as you can see, I have the truck in the middle of the field there. Probably shouldn't be there driving all over the crop, but he's there right now. And we're gonna go ahead and start harvesting some, I almost said sugar beets. I actually originally thought it was sugar beets, but it's not. These things happen sometimes. There we go. So let's go ahead and get started here. Yeah, it was really funny. Originally I thought it was sugar beets for some strange and obscure reason. I don't know what the deal was there, but I honestly thought it was sugar beets for some strange reason. So, anyway, so I have that truck on course play right now, and it's a low trailer, so it should have no problems getting underneath the, the harvester here, uh, which will be fairly nice. As you can see, I got GPS running right now. Probably means I can see, if I look around, I should be able to see, maybe I can't. Usually what it means is, uh, Sometimes if you fiddle around with uh, the console commands, you'll get stuff like the, uh, I forget what you even call it now. You'll see the cameras in the sky. And uh, it's kind of funny because, I wonder if I actually get out, can you see it? Yeah, there's right there. So if I press the button again, it'll disappear. But when you fiddle with that and you have the GPS, it doesn't work um, just the way it is. So it's unfortunate, but I've gotten used to it. So it's not a big deal for me at least, so. Yeah, I totally like started recording this episode and I was like, oh cool, this is going to be a good episode, I'm going to harvest some sugar beets, and in my in my mind that's what was going to happen, but uh, they weren't sugar beets, so that's why it was a little strange. Can I actually, oh I can just do it that way, good. Um, in my mind they were sugar beets, but of course they weren't actually sugar beets, which was the funny thing. Let's lower that down, there we go. So I don't know why it worked out that way, but... I totally thought it was. Looks pretty neat. It's like apparently I'm getting stuck somehow. There we go. Let's try and get this going. I think it's just because we're going over the hill. I don't think I can put... Oh, I can. Okay. I didn't think you could put uh, that on there. It's got five in there too. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll change it to once we're 100% we'll stop. So the truck should start working. Let's go ahead and just double check. Yep, there it goes. And if all else, all is working well, we shouldn't have any problems with the truck because it's a sh uh, the actual trailer itself is pretty sh uh, short and stubby, I guess, um, in comparison to some of the other grain trailers. Like the other grain trailer that we have on this, ma or I could get, is <clears throat> uh, from the Russian pack. This one right here, which is huge. So. Let's see if it works out. Should do. And because I'm controlling the combine, should make our lives just a wee bit easier. There we go. We should get a good yield from this because this is all... Oh yes, I have to manually unload, don't I? Yes, there we go. Perfect. There we go, truck's gonna stop. We're gonna go around and do a headland first. I don't know how this would even work in real life. I think they don't usually do curved headlands. Uh, I think what they tend to do in real life is they tend to put like straight edges on the end uh, to act as a headland. And uh, I've actually seen it done a few times in real life. It's kind of interesting to see because what happens is like, what they'll do is they'll put like at the end right here, you can see me pointing of course, but I'm pointing right now. At the end right here, what will happen is uh, you'll have like a straight part that goes like, just like it is right here, you can see the rows going back and forth. You have a straight part and then you'd be like in perpendicular lines. That's how it usually works. So, and that's how it would normally work, but in this game they don't really, because like the way it works with the rows and picking up, all, uh, picking up the potatoes on the rows and all that, or the hills I should say, but this game doesn't make that distinction at all. You can just turn and do whatever you like, which is kind of funny sometimes because if you compare it to real life, you're like, how does that even work? Well, the answer is in real life, it doesn't work. There we go. 
apparently that little section didn't like that. I think because it dips just a little bit too much. And because it dips just a little bit too much, it creates problems, but... Ah, well. So we'll do this for a little bit. Uh, we actually have quite a few potatoes already. Uh, if I go and... We have 195,000 liters of potatoes already. Uh, but I planted these potatoes a while back, so... That's the reason why we still have uh, why we have potatoes here. And out of the field, uh, field number eight, I planted sunflowers. Now the strange thing is, it says there's sunflowers on here, and it says you can sell sunflowers. But the odd part is the fact that uh, uh, is the, is the fact that it doesn't actually uh, well, doesn't make a difference. Is that it doesn't say like if I go bring this up, there doesn't say there's sunflowers in there, so. Which is a bit strange. One of the really nice things about this Maxi Overlay mod, which is by Decker, is you can actually change the color. So I changed the colors of potatoes to like purple. So I knew what was what, basically. It makes your life a lot easier, because then you can tell. Because sometimes I find that potatoes and sugar beets are really close to each other, and uh, trying to decipher which one's which can be really painful sometimes. So having that capability of adjusting the, the actual color itself is really nifty. And the funny thing is, it's like practically purple, so I'm sure Kathy would appreciate that. It's like pink purple, fuchsia maybe some people might call it, but... Oh, that truck's starting up, so he's gonna start following us. Yeah, I actually had to spread some, uh, I actually had to spread some... Oh, that's interesting. Doesn't actually say what it's growing, huh. Um, I actually had to spread some water like I said before in order to actually increase the moisture because the moisture was like at zero practically so hadn't got any rain yet I guess in game so it's one of the downfalls sometimes when you have a sunny stretch depending where you are depending where you live in the world some places they actually have to put uh, water they actually have to do that they actually have to uh, spread water down and it happens sometimes in Ontario I've been told just depends on what type of crop you're using so like uh, for like for example, I think grapes use quite a bit, and depending where you are located in Ontario, so depending on the crop and like the season as well. Like in my in-laws' farm, for example, it's pretty rare that they would need to uh, put water down because they live close to a swamp, so it's pretty the soil's pretty moist to begin with. So let's go ahead and unload that guy, or unload this. I love drive control. Can see how full that truck is. Truck is right now. There we go. And we can send him to, to drive home. So he's 68% full. And he'll probably get stuck somewhere on that little section. I'm fairly certain of that, just based on the way course play works sometimes. There we go. Let's raise that up. Put it back down make this turn properly there we go and we can close the course play nice so I know it's driving all over the crop but sometimes having course play do these types of things just makes just makes things just a little bit better now unfortunately you only have like 10 kilometers an hour but this is probably pretty fast for harvesting potatoes like I've harvested potatoes in real life and it's pretty slow so I'm pretty surprised that 10, well, 10 kilometers, maybe is that's accurate, I don't know. One second, water break. As you can probably notice, I'm not drinking coffee, and that's because it's noon, and it's closer to like tea time, if anything, but just a note, water mood today, so. Not recording in the morning, that's the reason why. Normally when I record in the morning, that's when I'll have coffee. Uh, but of course in this scenario, I'm not recording in the morning, that's the reason why I'm drinking water. Otherwise I would drink coffee. But alas, it doesn't always work that way, so... It doesn't always work that way. Now eventually what I'll do is I'll probably finish up this head, the second headland, I think. And then what I can do is... Hire a worker. And I'll show you a couple things we've done off camera, or I've done off camera. The truck seems to be emptying well enough. This is good. I wasn't certain if it was going to work or not. Because 
Sometimes you run into problems with uh, unload points, but these unload points have been uh, doctored, so to speak, so they're pretty easy to get to. Uh, they've actually been widened quite a bit, so it makes your life a lot easier. So what I'll do is I'll finish this little headland right here. Like so. And I'll be curious to see how this handles this little section here. That's not too bad, actually. Almost took a dive there again. I don't know what it is, but I think it's just the way it's angled because it's kind of like going goes down to that little section of water there. And obviously just creates problems. There we go. Very nice. That truck truck's going to come back now. Probably going to start unloading this guy right away anyways. Very nice. All right. Let's make this turn. Then we'll hire a worker for a bit. And see how that works. Those hard workers, wow. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, so... We're gonna find out here. Alright, straighten her out. There we go. And that's hire worker, and I'll show you what I've been doing off camera here. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, so... Just been keeping this thing topped up because it's making fertilizer and grain for us. Or grain for us, seeds for us, which is good. And I was using the uh, Kirovitz to keep it topped up with slurry. And interestingly enough, I actually purchased, uh, I purchased a sprayer because I needed to put water down. So I just purchased that off camera, one you've seen before. And one other random thing I noticed is that that sprayer won't get filled from this right here for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because it doesn't get close enough or it doesn't have a certain, I wanna say it's because it doesn't have the overloader script or the overloader, overloader specialization, but anyways. So because of that, what I did is I put this dunger, this fertilizer silo right here, so I can take the, take the fertilizer out of there and put it into here. And here we have 15,000 liters of fertilizer and I can just drop it off in here, uh, which is kind of nice. I wasn't sure if that was the right one because I have a couple of them, but that seems to be working well enough. So what I'll do is I'll just, I can actually fill the this coat universal and put it into the spray, sprayer, which I thought was kind of interesting. And you can actually change your fill types straight from the, uh, the sprayer as well. And I don't know if I could actually, how's this guy handling? Oh, it's not doing too bad. I wonder if I can change fill types because I upgraded to the new soil mod version and maybe that will change a couple things. I don't know. Let's find out real quick here. I think it does, but I'm not certain. Let's see. Now, can I change this? No. Okay, so I was able to change it when I was close to the overloader or the Coat Universal trailer, but before that I didn't have uh, any luck, which is kind of interesting, so. The other thing I've been working on is I actually put a little bit of the potatoes into the potato steamer, but the problem is, is that I don't know what the deal is, but that Coat Universal trailer wouldn't fill from this placeable. Now, I think it's because it's a placeable. I don't know why it didn't like it, but it really didn't like filling fuel from this. So that's the reason why I haven't uh, actually started the steamer, which kind of threw me off a little bit, to be honest with you. So I was like, what's going on here? Why is it like that? So. Anyway, so we do have those two fields now. We could theoretically get a, another one, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, let's go to the, I don't know which group that's guys in. So as you can see, I put this right here, and I also put a uh, treadmill, a water mill right here, or water mill, that's not the right word. What am I thinking of? Windmill, there we go, water mill. Well, not, it's kind of like water mill, but anyways, I put this for the water for the cows, and uh, now we're gonna give the cows water as well, which is good because that keeps them up at 110%, as you can see right there, 110%. Actually, they need some straw. So what I should do is grab this guy right here. And as you can see, I got the Flygel, uh, the Flygel, I don't know if you can call it, bucket. 
This is one that came from ModHoster.com, one of the more recent front loader packs that came. Uh, there's a CSZ one, and then there's this one. And this one has a few other nice things about it, so. Let's close the bucket up. So we're not scaring people with our spikes. And what we'll do is we'll give our animals a bit more straw. And then we'll go from there. So luckily we have the front loader attachment just over here as well, so we can just do it manually. We do have a bale shredder, or I could use our fierabole as well. There's a couple different options. All right, so it's a pretty big dip there. Let's just put this over here for the time being. There we go. And we'll grab our CSZ or CSZ, whatever you want to call it. And we'll pick up some more of these straw bales that are hanging out here. And I think the automatic part of this stays on. The attachment is valid. Disable automatic loading. So what will happen is, if I come over here, it should like automatically load a couple of these bales. I don't know, so there it goes. It's kind of strange the way it works actually, but there you go. You can automatically get two loaded up like that. So I could put them on the bale shredder, but the bales would go nowhere. And uh, is it? Oh, it's this guy here. So I'm going to put them directly into this Federable right here, which will actually shred the bales for us. All right, let's go back. Man, that tractor is loud. All right, now when you turn the automatic, uh, what is it, unlock bales, there we go. And then we can just dump them straight in there. Now the one downfall is you can't like look up very easily here, whoops. There we go. And, Two bales, that's 8,000, or 4,000, so that's 8,000, so they could take a few more bales. Okay. Let's get a couple more straw bales. Now, remember, this is from the uh, straw on that one field. Field one, I think it is. That's where we pick up this straw from. There's the automatic loading feature again. It's kind of nice if you don't want to fiddle with, like, loading. There we go. It's kind of nice. There we go. That tractor is just crazy, crazy loud. All right, unlock. Did I unlock them? I guess I didn't. So that's another 8,000, so that's 16,000. I don't think that tractor holds much more than that, no. So we'll just take this and give it to our cows. There actually is a sell point for uh, straw. Um, on this one at least, this version of it. There's there's a few different versions of Bandicao, or Bandicao, Baldacchino out there now. So keep that in mind. Like one person, I think his name was G-Man, he was commenting on the fact that I was using a different version the one, than the one that he has. So it was just, which happens sometimes, so. There we go. It actually probably be pretty pretty close to being enough. Give them a little bit of straw here. Yeah, it's gonna be just perfect. Nice. I do like this Federable thing, it's pretty neat. Reminds me of the old ones we used to have in 2013 that were pretty slick. This little Deutzfahr tractor does really well out here. I just like it because it's a, the it's a nice size for like these little kind of miscellaneous tasks like this. There we go. Uh, and I don't think we need any more, any more straw at the moment. Do they need silage? Silage they're good on, and TMR they're good on. Okay, so give them some straw, and they're good to go. So let's move this over here. And there we go, perfect. So I think that'll conclude the episode for today. We'll just check on our, just check on our 
potato harvest and how that's going. Uh, of course, as you're aware, potato harvests take for forever, basically. So I'm not going to subject you to the whole thing, but we're actually making pretty good progress. This truck and <laughs> I say that now as he gets in the way. Uh, he's making pretty good progress so far, so. May have missed a little bit, but. But this is a pretty sweet truck. I don't know why I don't know why I haven't used it more, but this Russian pack that I picked this truck up from is pretty neat. Like this is a uh, it's a whole pack, so it's kind of nice because they all kind of fit this particular style. So that's the reason why I like it specifically. Uh, they didn't miss that much. Actually, he's doing a pretty good job. But this trailer comes with the pack. The truck comes with the pack. It's pretty sweet. So. Anyways, folks, that'll be it for me for today. Another episode of Baldacchino. Almost said Bantico. Baldacchino. And if you enjoyed yourself, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for some more Baldacchino. My name's Ian Robson, and I'll catch you guys later.